Hello, perfect beauties. My name is Daisy, and today I am going to be sharing with you myths and facts about microneedling, so play along. These were collated from some of our banished soldiers' most frequently asked questions, along with questions I have seen reappearing in the lives that I do on at Banish Acne Scars, and just questions you guys have in the comments. So let's see if these are myths or facts. Microneedling damages your skin and you shouldn't do it. Er, false, I don't know who made this rule or who spoke about this. When you take advice and when you get advice about skincare, make sure you get credible resources and you research from published clinical trials because that will give you the most accurate sense of data. Of course, everyone has their own opinion, everyone has their own story, and everyone's skin is different. So just saying one influencer says one thing doesn't mean it will work or it won't work for you. According to a lot of the clinical trials done on microneedling and according to Dr. Sutter Field's book on microneedling. He was one of the first to write a, a very thorough book about all the different types of microneedling and how it works. Microneedling is actually really, really good for the skin. What it does is it creates tiny micro little injuries and your body responds to that as wound healing and so it will repair the skin. So it's really great for acne scars and rebuilding collagen in the skin, preventing fine lines and wrinkles, and for overall skin rejuvenation. Now, Microneedling can be damaging if you do it wrong. And the ways to do it wrong is number one, to use a bad device. And when I mean bad device is to use a replica microneedling tool, to use a fake microneedling tool, to use one that doesn't have very good needles on there, to want, use one that is contaminated. I know there's a lot of cheaper versions out there. And you just have to be really careful because those could be made from inferior metals, contaminated metals, and that will definitely damage and scar your skin. The the other way you could damage your skin is if you are pushing too hard. So if you are using one of those like microneedling rollers and you're using one with like, let's say two millimeter length needle, which is only sold on this black market and really push, push, push in your skin, you could damage it because you're gonna get your skin all bloody and you definitely, definitely should not be inducing any blood if you're doing it at home. If you're inducing any blood that should be done under supervision of a doctor. Every single place you get professional microneedling done has to be supervised by medical professionals and has to have a doctor sign on in there. You can definitely contaminate yourself and you know just create a huge mess with your skin if you do it at home with those like black market tools. You can damage your skin if you're not using a good natural serum on top of your skin afterwards. So if you're using a serum or something that has ingredients that cause you to break out that have like bad ingredients for your skin or maybe harsh ingredients that can also cause damage to your skin because your skin is very, very sensitive after microneedling. So you don't wanna be putting harsh ingredients on your skin. You don't wanna be putting those really, really, really chemically products on your skin because that can further like exacerbate your skin. And then also if you're not waiting enough times in between microneedling sessions, you need to wait for your skin to repair itself and to heal itself. So if you're doing microneedling really, really intensely every single night, that's probably not the best for your skin. You wanna wait a certain amount of time for your skin to heal. But otherwise, if you look at all of the clinical trials, there is proven evidence that microneedling does help with the appearance of acne scars and it works wonders. Okay, true or false? You can only microneedle on your face. That is false. You can microneedle anywhere on your body. A lot of people will use actually microneedling and PRP for people who are balding. So if you if you watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians, and that's my like guilty pleasure, Kourtney Kardashian has an episode where she did microneedling on our bald spot and then they put like growth factors in there. So people do do it for balding. You can use it on stretch marks. Some people will use it on their butt or on their stomach area, especially during pregnancy when people start getting stretch marks. Now don't use it um, while you're pregnant, but you can definitely use it afterwards. True or false, you shouldn't share your microneedling device. And that is true, ding, ding, ding. No matter what, do not share your microneedling device. It is so illegal to do that because you're gonna cross contaminate not only bacteria, but if there is the happenstance where there could be blood on your device, no, 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 no. Have you heard of that facility? There was a facility that did microneedling PRP and some, some of the patients got like HIV or something because they contaminated either the blood or the device or something. No, 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 no. So for your banisher, for your microneedling device, do not, and I repeat, do not share it with anybody else. This is your own personal product. Don't share with anyone else because you're going to 
run huge risk of infection or you know cross contamination in certain instances with that you can share things like eyeshadow it's safe to share foundation you know it's, it's safe to share other products but do not do not do not share your device with anyone else true or false you do not need to replace your microneedling device uh, that is false if you think about it you're puncturing tiny little holes in your skin and even though the banisher 2.0 needles are super super sharp they are made out of titanium coated with gold over time they are going to kind of get dull just like how when you you know shave your legs the blades on the razors get dull after you tweeze your eyebrows for the 30th time, your tweezer does get dull and sometimes you need to sharpen it. So just like that, you need to replace your microneedling device so that way the needles stay fresh and poking in your skin without causing it to be dull and therefore injure your skin. Haven't you heard of that thing where it's like, if you lay in a sharp bed of nails, it doesn't hurt, but if you lay on like a bunch of dull nails, it'll actually hurt even more. It's kind of the same thing. Secondly, you need to replace your microneedling device because there could be a small probability that bacteria, dirt, oil, whatever can grow in those little crevices where the needles and the white faceplate is on, like, you know, here. So it's really, really important that even though cleaning it with alcohol and sterilizing it does really help with that, there is still a small probability that it won't get in there. And I always say take a brand new soft bristle toothbrush, soak that in alcohol, and then use that to kind of scrub around it. But still, you still wanna replace it just for sanitary reasons. So yes, you need to replace that. This is not something you wanna skimp out on. Maybe you can skimp out on those $6 lattes, okay, but not on not replacing your microneedling device. You can microneedle while pregnant, and the answer is true. So if you're pregnant, you can microneedle on your face. I would recommend not going higher than 8.5 because during pregnancy, your body is you know, changing a lot and you don't wanna add added, added stress to your body. So the Banisher 2.0 is at a 0.5 length. And also do not microneedle near the tummy area. <laughs> during pregnancy, you can do that afterwards, but you, again, you don't wanna cause any weird added stress to your body. Also make sure no matter what, you're using a natural product on yourself after microneedling, especially if you're pregnant. Do not use retinols. Do not use any kind of harsh ingredients or chemicals because your skin will be more sensitive. Microneedling is super painful. Uh, microneedling is not painful. I would say it's like tweezing your eyebrows in terms of the pain. Getting it professionally done is way more painful. I will say that. I remember I got it professionally done. The nurse didn't give me numbing cream. She was like, you have to pay an extra like 30 bucks and I had to wait an extra 30 minutes. I was like, I, don't, I ain't got time for that. So um, she microneedled my face without it. That really hurt. Usually when you get it done professionally, they will put numbing cream and then you can't feel it. If you use something like the Banisher 2.0, it doesn't really hurt because you have so much control over the face plate, the, the head of the Banisher. And that way you're not like going back and forth, like pushing and like pushing on creating tram track scarring on your skin. You're just targeting certain areas. You can really control when the needle hits your skin. So I like it because I know it's gonna hit there and that makes it less painful. If you don't know where the pain is coming from, it's like a lot more painful. Painful, if you know what I mean. If you don't get microneedling done at a plastic surgeon's office, it doesn't work. And that answer is false. Mm. So the difference between doing it at home with the banish kit and going to a plastic surgeon's office is usually the plastic surgeon's office will use a much larger needle. They usually use a derma pen, which is the one, the little wand thing with a bunch of needles and it vibrates back and forth. They'll usually use that at like a two millimeter length. And because you're doing it at a doctor's office, they are authorized to, you know, get any blood out of your face. So when they do the procedure at the doctor's office, the nurses or the doctor needs to be wearing those glasses, you know, those face masks things and gloves and everything needs to be protected, right? Doing it at home will still work, but you, you're just not going to be drawing blood, but it's still really, really important to make sure the area is clean and that you're sanitizing your devices regularly and you're developing good habits while using the product. Now, for collagen induction therapy, it doesn't necessarily mean the longer the needle length, the more collagen you will get. There hasn't been any like proven evidence about that. However, for the Banisher 2.0, we are at a 0.5 length 
and that is a good length to kind of start getting the collagen induction therapy out. Anything shorter than a 0.5 length doesn't necessarily induce collagen. It will help like serums go into the skin, but it won't kind of get the collagen inducing process. So don't think longer is necessarily better. Don't think more blood or more pain is necessarily going to help the skin more. For me, it's more about consistency of using it. So making sure you're using it on a regular basis than just like using like a four millimeter needle on your face, getting it all bloody, and then just forgetting about it, you know, for the rest of the year. So it's more about consistency because your collagen fibers are constantly changing. Unfortunately, your collagen is decreasing every single minute of your life. Like it's just, we're just getting older. So it's really important to keep it up. You can get the same microneedling products on eBay for $10. <laughs> uh, false. So I call it a black market of microneedling products. Again, microneedling wasn't super popular back in 2011, 2012. But since I talked about it on this channel and since Spanish came out, I think a lot of brands have started noticing that microneedling is really popular. And there are kind of fake sellers out there who do create replica products and they'll sell it on this black market and I think it's really, really important to be very, very careful about where you get your device from because again, they can use inferior metals. You don't know how they're making the products. You don't know if they're cleaning the products or if they're assembled in a sanitized area. Cleanliness is super important and you also don't know the needle. So I know for a fact when I've purchased these like rollers from other brands, sometimes the actual needle will hook instead of being straight up it actually hooks sometimes they're uneven it's just the quality control system so at banish before they're even shipped to us they're very very much carefully inspected and then once they're shipped we actually recheck them we recheck every single banisher by hand we have this like lens microscope thing and we actually check them and it does take us a long time which eats into you know the cost of labor but for us it's super super important that we're not having any 0.1 percent chance like we don't have anything weird going on with our banishers so we constantly check 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 recheck and the last true and false microneedling is only for acne scars <laughs> false Microneedling is used for any time you want to have your ingredients better absorb into the skin and it's also for skin rejuvenation. So if you think about microneedling as a way to iron out your skin, that's basically what it does. Again, microneedling pokes tiny little holes in your face. It will uh, induce the wound healing process of your skin, therefore creating more collagen and elastin fibers into your skin and then pushing your skin up. So it's really great for acne scars because when you have an acne scar, it's like a little divot right in your face. And then microneedling will help it lift up. And it also will help for fine lines and wrinkles because that's the same thing. You get little creases, little divots in your skin. Also helps for stretch marks, again, with the divots. Also helps for um, cellulite and any kind of skin irregularities. So thank you all so much. I hope you learned something from this true and false assumptions about microneedling video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if you want to add any true or false assumptions. And we might be doing a giveaway, so read the description box below. Okay, bye. Hey soldiers, it's Daisy, founder of Banish. Did you like this video? Please give it a thumbs up and comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and don't forget, Banish, we got your back. Bye.